special guest. This man's known for shedding light on different stories, on people's lives, all that good stuff. He goes by the name of Nativo Gonzalez. What's up, man? That's good, boy. How you doing, man? Good. How you doing? Oh, I'm wonderful, man. It's so good to see you, man. It's man, been a while. Yeah. And it's good to see you again. I appreciate you having me here. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Hey, yeah. so go ahead for the people who don't know who you are. Let them know where you're from and what is it that you do. Okay, yeah, I'm from Santa Cruz, California, Central Coast. Um, what I do right now, or what I do in my life? See, well, right now, right, right now. Right now, yeah. I'm the host of a podcast called Pay the Cost. Um, I'm also uh, lightweight, the, the face of downtown Santa Cruz. I'm helping out with the downtown association. Because of COVID, you know, there's been a lot of less traffic downtown. So right now, we're just trying to shed a light on some stores down there get the interest back up, and uh, that's what I'm doing, man. Dope, yeah. dope. So you were born and raised in Santa Cruz, or? I was born in Mountain View. Right. I, I like to be clear about that, okay. because people, the... people from Santa Cruz are very localized, you yeah. know what I mean? So you, you don't want to say the wrong thing and be yeah. caught off guard later. Yeah. So, so I was born in Mountain View, California, in the Bay Area. Uh, but we did actually move, we're in Scotts Valley, California right now, yeah. uh, and actually when I was three months old, this is the first place we moved, and then we headed down to Santa Cruz a few months later after that. And then I was raised in Santa Cruz, so I mean, I went to elementary, junior high, high school out here, so this this is my home, Yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you can you damn really claim it, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. man. I got, I got SC right here. <laughs> you know I mean? That's a lot yeah. of original right there, as a matter of fact. So what school did you go to uh, growing up? I went to De La Viega, okay. and I went to Branson Forty Junior High, oh, man, and, and I got I, I I got to go to Harvard for about three months. B forty B, you know, yeah. um, and and then I went to Harvard for about three months, and it didn't really work out over there too well for me. I I, I didn't blend in as well yeah. as they wanted me to, so I ended up going to uh, the Arc on the West Side, which was an alternative high school, which actually worked out a lot better for me. Okay. Because, uh, you know, in mainstream high school, it's very sink or swim, yeah. you know, and, and, and in a place like Harbor High School or Santa Cruz High or Soquel High um, or a mainstream high school, there's, there's not a lot of focused attention. Yeah, yeah. And, and I drifted a lot because, um, you know, I have my own, my own problems as we all do it coming up. Um, and, and once I got to the ARC, um, the, the classroom, there, there's probably like 10 to 12 kids in it. You know, the, the, the teachers that were there actually cared because there was students there that didn't come from uh, quote unquote regular backgrounds. Yeah. So they knew that we had, we were special and, yeah. we, and we needed that extra attention. Well, yeah, you still got like sore thumbs basically. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I felt blessed that I got to go there because I, I got to be honest, B, if, if I didn't go to that high school, I don't think I would have graduated. Um, but, but after that, um, I kind of messed around for a little while, and, and I went to Cabrillo for a little bit. Uh, I had a really good time, you know, I, I, I love education. Intelligence yeah. is, uh, man, it's it's tough. Tough. It, it, it turns me on, man. I'm attracted yeah. to intelligence, you know what I mean? Um, but I like finding knowledge in my own way. You know, um, I think education is great. I think college is great. I think school is great. I like the school of hard knocks. Yeah. I, I like to get kicked in my teeth and then figure out what I did right or wrong. Yeah. So that, that that's my path of learning. Yeah, well that says a lot about your, your whole show that you got going on, paid the cost. You yeah. know what I mean? It says a whole lot about you and the whole meaning behind it. Yeah, well you paid the cost to be yeah. the boss, right? Exactly. You know, it's funny because when I when I was trying to think of a name uh, for the podcast, I, I did uh, my first thought was Ocean Views. Mm -hmm. Because we're by the ocean. Yeah. This is the Central Coast. I, I highlight people from the Central Coast. So that was the first thought I had. And and something that's kind of is frowned upon in podcasting uh, to, to have a similar name or the same name as somebody else. And I looked it up and there was already two or three shows with that same name. Yeah. So what I did was I put in my headphones, I went for a walk, and, and I just pressed, uh, pressed uh, shuffle mm -hmm. on, on my music. And a Snoop Dogg uh, song came on. He said, "Paid the cost to be the boss." Yeah. And I said, "Paid the cost." That's that's the name that's of the, the show word. right there. Because it it, it, it it you know, it highlights the struggle to get to where you're trying to go. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And a lot of people I have on are either entrepreneurs, uh, masters at their craft, 
artists, surfers, professionals, you know, there's, there's a lot, and, and all those people paid the cost and sacrificed to get to where they're at now. Yeah. So it messed perfectly. No doubt, man, shit. So, you know, before we get into all the good stuff, you growing up in Santa Cruz, now were you the only child, or did you have any siblings, or how was that? How well, I, I have, I have siblings, but we're, we're all spread out. So yes, in my household, I was, I was the only child. Okay, yeah. so how was that? Were you were expected of anything from your uh, parents, or did you have both parents in the family, or? Uh, no, uh, no, uh, no, I, I grew up with a single mom. Uh, yeah, and I guess that's not really true. I, I, I grew up with a stepsister for, for a long time, but she kind of, she went her own route with her mom later on. So it's, it's we, we, we were together from like three to like 16. So it was a while we were together. Um, shit, what's the question again? <laughs> no, I was asking what was expected from you from, from your family. That's right, that's right. Um, I think, you know, just, so my, I think my mom's main focus for me was education, was school. I, 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 my mom didn't get very far in school, and she came from a five-sibling si family. And my mom's actually from the Detroit area of Michigan, so it, it was pretty rough over there for you know the way the way she came up. Yeah. And she dropped out of school very early. So I think my mom's intentions for me, my path was at the very least I needed to graduate high school. Yeah. So she was real hard on me with that and and something that I didn't really find out about until I was older was how in communication she was with all my teachers yeah. um, And especially one teacher Bruce Darling man. He he was Definitely a role model for me still is I still talk to him today. He wow. went to my wedding. You know what I mean? He, he's a great man and uh, I, I pretty much stayed in his class all four years of high school you know, and, and he really, he gave me a father figure that, that I needed at that point, you know, and, uh, I, you know, I've had some great men in my life, you know what I mean, and, and I was very blessed to have those people in it, but to answer the question simply, I, I think the expectations was to finish high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you said your, your teacher played a big role somewhat in your life, and, and you know, he was a, a role model in your life. Do you have anything that you took from him and, and, you know, you, what do you call it, you put it into your life, you know, and... and on a regular basis. Yeah, on a regular basis. Yeah, man, I mean, he would do shit like, uh, you know, again, it was an alternative high school, so it was, a, it was yeah. a little, it was different than going to a regular high school, man, and, and I, I think I got student of the month one, one month, you know what I mean, yeah. one year. And, and they took pictures of you, you know, and I was like, F I'm not taking this fucking picture. It's nerve. <laughs> you know what I mean? and, and, and Bruce shoved me against the fucking wall, yeah. and the picture of me is him holding me against the door like this. Yeah, like, and I'm like <laughs> smiling, you know what I mean? So I, I think what Bruce gave me was just fucking do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and something as simple as a statement like that can take you a long way. You know, and, and I think a lot of people, they miss their opportunities yeah. because they don't just fucking do it. No doubt. You know what I mean? And I think fear holds a lot of people back. And um, I guess that's why I kind of, I, I needed you to kind of elaborate the way you wanted me to explain who I am yeah. now. Because I see myself wearing a bunch of different hats. Yeah. But I think overall, if I had to say what my occupation is, it would be an entrepreneur. Because, um, again, I mean, I've owned a car audio shop, I've owned a motel, and now I'm on to this, now I'm with the Downtown Association, and look, I get nervous just like everybody else, yeah. but I drive through it, you know what I mean? And that's the thing, if, if it's, uh, you know, we were talking before the cameras were on, and, and one of the things I was telling you is, is one of the books I was listening to recently is that uh, there's different vehicles that you need to get in to get to your end point. Yeah. You know, it's it's not just an A to B ride. It's an A to B to C to D to E all the way to Z. Yeah. And, and when you finally get to your destination, and and I think I'm aware of that without really being aware of that. Yeah. You know, is that I know that, you know, I've gotten from A to B and now I need to get over to C. Well, I need to get into a different vehicle because it's different yeah. terrain. Yeah. So I've been riding in a, in a Honda and that's all good, but now I need to get into a Jeep yeah. because we're going over the mountain. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So there's a bunch of different paths in your life that you need to find the right vehicle to get you to that right place. Gotcha. That makes perfect sense. Couldn't say that any better. Yeah. So growing up in Santa Cruz, what were some things that you faced? Because, you know, a lot of people, when they come to Santa Cruz or they ain't from Santa Cruz, like the Blue Rock or the hippies and yeah. all this and that, but, you know, obviously you, you have some kind of story and you live some, you know, life that's full of ups and downs and, you know, you were able to come successful some way, somehow, you know, what were some uh, trials and tribulations that you had to face? Well, <clears throat> the, the biggest ones for me is, is I'm a biracial child. So again, my mom is from Michigan and she's a white girl, you know, and, and my father was first generation of our family to be born in, in America, in California. Uh, all my family is down uh, from LA. Okay. Um, and, and because I didn't have a real solid relationship with my father and I, I missed out on a lot of opportunities and I think speaking Spanish is one of them, is a huge one of them. Um, I remember going into parties with my homeboys, you go over to their grandma's or grandfather's house or whatever, and you'd almost get kind of trash talked about behind your back because yeah. you couldn't speak Spanish. You know, you walk into grandma's house and she says something to you and you're like, oh, I'm sorry. And it was kind of like, uh, this motherfucker, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so that, that was a real hard one for me. I think, um, I think I missed out on my, my father's experiences because he was locked up for a yeah. long time in a lot of different places, you know, come being, being a young Chicano man from, from uh, LA, you know, they're from Compton. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on down there. And the, there's times I do remember being able to, to talk to my dad and, and being able to relate. Yeah. Um, but the connection got cut, you know, and, and I lost that, that place to relate with things that were going on with me in my life. You know what I mean? Um, and, and looking brown and, and not being able to speak Spanish and being in a town that's predominantly white, yeah. uh, going to a high school that's predominantly white, such as Harbor High, yeah. um, that's that's almost, uh, I mean, my perception of Harbor High is kind of bougie, a little yeah. richer, a little upscale, you know what I mean? Um, and it was hard trying to blend in there, man. And, and when you're, trying to find yourself and when you're trying to find your father um, you start looking in the wrong places yeah. you know and for as beautiful and tourist touristy as Santa Cruz is there's an underbelly mm -hmm. and it's kept under wraps for the tourism aspect yeah you know you know as well as me is that the, the boardwalk area has been plagued with crime and, mm -hmm. and all kinds of shit for for decades yeah and uh, you know, a lot of people come down here not knowing what's going on down there, and they come out real, real wrecked. Yeah, until it happens. Yep. Yeah. And and you know, Santa Cruz, you know, it, it's it's got an undercurrent. You know what I mean? And I and I use that from from an ocean analogy, right? Yeah. You know, an undercurrent is something that you can't see on top of the water. It's under the water, and if you get into that undertow, that undercurrent, it'll sweep your ass off, yeah. and they may never find you again. Yeah, it's called getting barreled. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, um, Santa Cruz has definitely made me street smart. Yeah. It's made me wiser. It's definitely kicked me in my face when I was down, but it's also lifted me to the top when I was ready for it. Yeah. But I had to go out and find that. You know what I mean? And, and I I had to know my worth, you know? Yeah. And, and knowing your worth is a huge part of the game, man. Because yeah, yeah. cause if I didn't find myself and know my worth, I wouldn't be sitting here and getting the opportunities that I'm getting now. Yeah. So I feel very blessed that maybe not at the time I wanted to be kicked in the face while I was yeah. down. But after you have those experiences, not much else can hurt you. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's, uh, it's one of the things that helped me shed fear. Yeah. You know, so... That's what Santa Cruz did for me. Oh, man.